Hey tax students, this is your teacher Roy again with a short video about a topic that's related to our chapter uh, 3. That's qualified business income deductions that you had probably learned last semester in chapter 4 when you had covered some miscellaneous incomes in this chapter. So the last section, I believe it's 10 here in chapter 4, discusses this qualified business income deduction and give you some simplified examples of how to calculate that. What I want to do is show you where on the tax forms these amounts are reported and calculated. So on our 1040 form, again we're dealing with 2018 and the calculation is similar for 2019 and future years and it's scheduled to terminate after 2025. But of course, tax laws can always be extended or modified or canceled in the meantime. The deduction shows up after the standard deduction and itemized deduction here in line 9. Again, even though this is related to business income, this qualified business income deduction is not a business deduction. It's treated similar when you do the uh, subtraction as the standard or itemized deduction, eventually coming down to this taxable income number that we're all familiar with to calculate the tax liability for the year. We're told to look in the instructions to the 1040 form to get information about this deduction and the calculation. So here's the instructions to the 1040 form for that line 9. And basically, it says that the deduction is 20% of the business income. And there's also a 20% deduction for dividends from a real estate investment trust or publicly traded partnership. But if your taxable income exceeds a certain dollar limit, here in the case of married filing joint, or for other filing statuses, then your qualified business income deduction will start to phase out, gets reduced. These dollar limits here are adjusted for inflation. And also, if your business is called what, what we call a specified trade or business, specified service trade or business, then like, uh, let's say, a doctor or uh, an attorney CPAs, that maybe some of you are planning to be, actuaries, singers, performing artists, uh, consultants, athletes, all of these are specified uh, trade or businesses that if your taxable income goes over, let's say another 50000 over this or 100000 over for marathon separate, the qualified business income deduction is totally phased out. In other words, zero. But if you're not in these specified service type businesses, then it still will be reduced if you go over these limits again, but not totally phased out. Based upon a very complex calculation of the amount of wages paid out by the business or the amount of depreciable property owned by those businesses. Uh, very complex. But let's take a look at a simplified situation that's calculated here in the worksheets of the 1040 form. It looks like on page 37 it begins. Again, for qualified business income typically from your Schedule C or dividends from REITs or or income from uh, K-1s of a publicly traded partnership. Uh, special situations apply to cooperatives. And again, here's those dollar amounts, yeah? And we're assuming the taxable income is going to be below 315 for joint and all the other filing statuses under this 157500 So you would list out each business and its applicable qualified business income but it's not apparent what qualified business income means unless you look at the instructions and it, it kind of mentions in a negative way what is not qualified business income but 
typically, if you take a look at your Schedule C profit, let's say Schedule C income, that's not your qualified business income. You still have to reduce it by any related expenses. So if you remember from last semester, there were deductions called adjustments, subtracted to get to the adjusted gross income or deductions for adjusted gross income. One of them was that 50% um, of the self-employment tax that you have to pay in addition to the income tax. So they give you a break by giving you a deduction for half of that. So that also has to be subtracted from your business income. And then any type of health insurance premium that you are deducting, not on the itemized deduction, but as an adjustment to AGI. Okay, again, this is for people that have self-employment income. Also, if you're self-employed, possibly you're contributing to a retirement plan. So that was the deduction related to your business income. Okay, retirement um, deduction. Things like a, a KEO plan or maybe a, a, a SEP plan. Okay, to get to the qualified business income. Now, if you have a qualified business loss, there is not going to be any qualified business income deduction for the year. But that loss may affect future year's deductions. In the case of 2018, you don't have to carry forward any prior year losses. So this would be zero for 2018. But if you have a loss here, adding up all the business income, this loss may affect the income for future years, reducing the deduction. Again, for 2018, this would be zero. And whatever we have left over, we multiply by 20% to get the tentative uh, deduction. We do the same thing for REIT dividends and income from uh, publicly traded partnerships. Again, multiplying it by 20% to get another possible qualified business income deduction that we total up to get, again, another tentative deduction number. Now, this deduction is limited based upon the taxpayer's taxable income. And again, we're assuming the taxpayer's taxable income is under these amounts here based upon the taxpayer's filing status. So we take that taxable income that's before the QBI deduction, which we're trying to figure out on this worksheet, and we're going to reduce that taxable income by any net capital gains. Really, this is the net long-term capital gains. And also, qualified dividends that ta taxpayers included in, in this taxable income. The reason why we're going to back it out is because this type, these types of income are taxed at very low rates. If you remember from last semester, either at 0, 15, or 20%. Well, we don't want to give them a double benefit, so we're going to back those types of income out to get a net taxable income figure without that. And then we multiply it by 20% to get another tentative credit amount. We, so we look at this amount over here in line 10 and this amount over here in line 14, and we pick the smaller amount. So this here is your qualified business income deduction for the year. Again, if you have a loss for the year, those losses may affect future years. So here are losses for the current year that you may have to report back up over here for next year or over here for next year's calculation. So if you're doing 2019, you're not going to do this worksheet anymore, but they're going to do all the same numbers here on this new form, 8995. Basically the same calculation, but now they formalize it by having you do a form and then attaching it to the tax return. Whereas a worksheet is not attached to the um, tax return. Now, 
Again, this is the simplified calculation. If you have uh, advanced calculation, there's another form here, an A version of the 8995, where again, now your income is past those limits we had mentioned, and you're one of those maybe special, uh, specified service type businesses like an attorney or CPA. And then um, additional limitations will apply. You can see that it's a two-page calculation on this sheet. In addition to having to fill out these schedules here, this is not our typical A, B, C we see maybe last semester, but these are new schedules attached to this 8995A form. It makes things more complicated. Definitely you want to use a computer tax software now if you have this type of situation. For our class, we're using the ProConnect Tax Online for our software. And at their site, they have this calculator. I have the link to this calculator in our Laulima Chapter Resource folder where you can enter um, estimated amounts for the year. And the nice thing is that it'll break down the tax effect if you're a Schedule C, like we're learning in our current chapter, or if you're dealing with a landlord rental income, there's more limitations here based upon the amount of hours the landlord puts into the uh, managing the property. Or partners in a partnership or shareholders in an S corporation, as compared to a regular corporation, which will be a tax at, again, at lower 21% rates we'll learn later this semester. Again, I'll have the link for this site here, this calculator, in our Lao Lima chapter resource folder. Complex topic, we'll keep examples, if any, during the semester very simple.